Oh, yes. Here we are back for another week, and we now know the final four. Welcome in on BetUS TV. I am merely the somewhat capable host, TJ Reeves. You're here for the handicappers as well, the fun, the frivolity, the back and forth, the banter, and the picks, although there's not a lot of picks for today because we don't have final four games till coming this weekend. We will have NIT games to talk about as the weekend unfolds. We're here nonetheless on BetUS TV. Hello, Corby Craig. Hello, Jeff Nadu. Good to be back as we get ready for the men's final four to be in Phoenix, Arizona. Glendale, to be exact, State Farm Stadium. And we now know it's UConn, Alabama, Purdue, and NC State. Everybody had that. I mean, show me a bracket that had Alabama and NC State in it, please. Somebody. Big man on campus, Jeff Nadu. When last we talked to you about 48 hours ago or so, we were trying to figure out who's going to be in the final four. We now know some thoughts on all of it. Well, you know, I wanted to just say one thing before we get into the games. I, you know, last night I there was nothing on, so I, I decided, you know what? I'm going to watch Old Yeller. I haven't seen it in years. It's a great movie, Disney <laughs> film back in the day. And, you know, I felt myself by the end feeling like, wow, you know, I feel a lot like this dog, right? I just the need real, to be put out. The real question, because I know where your humor is I need to be put Corby, out of my misery. Does Corby have any idea what you're talking about right now? Because he's so he does. Of he's nodding. Of so you had a sense of appreciation for the situation with Old Yeller. And unfortunately, the uh, the the farmer the owner had to put old yeller out of his misery yeah, i'm not ready to do that with you i'm not I ready am. to put you out of your misery right the, now. the mother says to him you know you, you got to do it i mean he he's he's not the same you know he, he's got to go and <laughs> that's how i feel i just need i need a few months i need to i'll be oh, back but I, 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 I can't win i suck i stink i know that's the uh that's the open of the show corby craig but i will Randy's have a women's play tonight Oh, yeah, on the show. All right. Uh, and and by the way, Titanic game coming. We'll probably make mention of it again here in a little while between Iowa and LSU in a rematch night. Corby Craig, rabies aside, how was your weekend? How are things, my friend? It was good. We saw the uh, rims in Dallas just as tight as they had been. So it was a, a good Saturday handicap into Sunday. Surprised that the tide got it done. Uh, it kind of killed my Calcutta, but... We got the win on the show, uh, and we still hold it. NC State Calcutta, which makes me look like the Calcutta King, but it was not yeah. at all on purpose. I did not project NC State to go this far. Uh, let's go back to Alabama just for a second. First time ever in the Final Four, and uh, they're at, at uh, the Crypto.com Arena, what was the Staples Center. They were behind by 13 points, and then the word I'm using, Brother Nadu, is seduced. They seduce you into play how we want to play. Go up and down, gun the threes. Uh, Clemson obliged them. Clemson was making some of them, but that's how Alabama wants to play. And my goodness, a second half that had 105 points in it or 104 points in it, and Alabama makes the final four. Uh, Jeff thought on that, um, that mindset uh, of they're never out of it, the way they can shoot the basketball, it seems like, Alabama. Yeah, I... I was on I was on Clemson, you know. It it was a tough day for some dogs. I mean, over the weekend, really other than NC State. Uh, they were the only dog that seemed to win. Um yeah, listen. I Clemson they they just kind of ran into the game where they didn't shoot the ball real well and look, Alabama couldn't miss. It seemed like every shot they they took in the second half from 3 went in. I, I commented on Twitter about it. I mean, Jaron Stevenson, a guy who I mean, I don't know. I think he had over 10 points two times this season. Drops 19. I mean, what, yep. what do you really do there? Guy hasn't had double figures since February 3rd in a game. Um, and look, Mark Sears has been elite. I felt like they had the guards and, and the ability to defend him, and they couldn't. Uh, P.J. Hall was kind of a foul trouble most of the night. Um, but, yeah, I felt like when, when Clemson blew that lead kind of towards the end of the first half, you thought, uh-oh. Because you're right. They kind of – that was a good word, seduced him into playing fast and – uh, look, I'll tell you the unsung hero for for Alabama, Rylan Griffin. This guy is mm -hmm. playing out of his mind. Uh, he, you know, another guy who, who was kind of not really there. They haven't had Latrell Wrights, bro. He's really stepped up. Let's look at the West bracket here on BetUS TV. By the way, thank you for finding us. Hit the like button. We're doing a lot of kind of big picture stuff. We'll maybe even give you a thought or two on some future plays here today coming off the weekend in the Elite Eight. And so in that West bracket on Saturday night, we see that Alabama emerged over Clemson. And again, I I'm not I'm not crying over spilt milk here, though. I thought New Mexico was going to take Clemson out right away. And if not, then Baylor would get them 
in the second game in Memphis in round two. In neither one of those games did New Mexico or Baylor shoot it very well. Arizona obviously didn't shoot it well with all the missed threes. They finally ran into a game that Alabama did make those shots. Corby, follow up. You're uh, you're in the state of Alabama, and the Tide survived. They make their first Final Four. Nate Oates deserves a lot of credit. Another thought on Alabama as we see this West bracket that Alabama has emerged out of. Yes, yeah, uh, props to them. I mean, they played a pretty tough schedule. I, I, you see Ch- Charleston, then Grand Canyon, then North Carolina. I would, uh, I don't commend them as much as some people are. But uh, I will say, I think this number they got posted for the, the coming game, which I'm sure we'll talk about the other side, but this number is crazy. I'm not the biggest Alabama fan supporter. I still think that they have a lot to prove, even in that Clemson game. Like uh, I think they got... They had some good variants. Um, but I mean, 12 in the final four is yeah. it's insane to think about. Let's talk about it right now. We can come back on camera as well, Kevin. Good job with that. And our bet U.S. crew did that. And I'm ignorant to this. That I would assume it was out Saturday night after the matchup was set or early Sunday. Did it open at 12? Has it stayed right there, Jeff, Corby, for, I mean, for UConn? You're just at this point. You're paying a crazy premium to bet these games. But here's the thing. I mean, how do you really bet into it? I mean, UConn is a machine. They've How many games they won in a row by more than 12 points? I mean, they're just shredding teams. I think the problem that Alabama has first out the gate is, again, if they're not shooting 16 for 35 from three, um, look, Connecticut, we forget. You know, Look, elite offensive team could score any way they need to, but they shut – down I mean that that 10 minute run where Illinois got outscored 30 to nothing you know we've all seen a lot of basketball in our life TG you've seen a lot more than all of us it may have been one of the more pathetic 10 minute runs ever by a team just but they shut uh, the greatest offense at, in the country down at this high a level I can honestly say and I think others have been going over this I can't recall an elite eight final four type game where one team outscores the other one 30 straight points the only thing that really comes to mind is you go in the way back to the 2000 um and nine of uh, uh, 2008 excuse me final four that's kansas north carolina that is kansas eventually the national champs uh, with uh, mario chalmers Darrell arthur and company they were up on north carolina like 43 to nine in the first half nato you may remember that corby you might be a little young yeah. That's about the only comparison at this high a level, an Elite Eight Final Four game in recent history, where a team scores 30 straight points into the first half, start of the second half, and eventually it became like 35 to 2. I just don't know where you wiped them out. Yeah. I just don't know where you go because I think we all kind of wondered coming into the Illinois game, you know, had, had UConn played a real good offense yet? They hadn't. You know, Illinois maybe had that tonic. They had Shannon. They had Domas. They had Hawkins. They had the ability, but they just completely shut them down. And Hurley made an interesting point at the end of the game. They asked him about the first, you know, 15 minutes. Maybe it was at halftime. And he said, we just turned into another gear. And it reminded me again, go to horse racing, of a horse that's just kind of, you know, lollygagging around and then decides, you know what, I'm just way faster than these horses and I'm just going to run by them. And it seemed like they flipped the switch and just said, okay, we kind of screwed around for 10 minutes. Now we'll actually play and care about it. And they wiped them off the, the court. Uh, it's going to take a monumental effort to even hang with them. Corby, back to the whole thing about the 12-point line. That's about where it opened, right? And you said right away it's very curious that it's that high. Yeah, I'll be on Bama uh, at 12, 11 and a half, 12. A, a few reasons. First, I, I agree with Jeff. This is a UConn team who, I mean, it, it doesn't look like they have any flaws. The issue here is just uh, the tax that you're paying. Like, do you think Alabama is as good as Northwestern? I think we'd all sit here and say yes. Northwestern was just an 11-point dog to UConn two games ago. So uh, we, we see an Illinois team that just closed seven and a half, eight. This number's crazy. This number should have been nine and a half max probably we see a hypothetical line of 14 and a half for nc state is bama two points better than nc state 100 percent uh the only thing that i think that and the issue is i don't even like alabama's offense it's just this number is crazy the only thing that i think bama has going for them is uconn is really good at at swarming the inside paint like you saw domask basically having to play post up uh just walk walk the point guard down the court that was the only points that they could score because Nobody was shooting threes. They don't, in particular, try to get out to the deep three. Like They'll let you shoot a Mark Sears three. Um, we saw it in the Creighton game. Creighton scored 85 points, and basically the only win that UConn's kind of been embarrassed this year was a team that was willing to shoot threes from 
kind of far out, and, and they hit them. They 45% from three, I think, that game. Um, so if Alabama can hit, I mean, we're in a different conversation. Can they? That's always the question. I always worry sure. about Alabama being able to hit shots, but uh, 12 just seems ridiculous. I thought this should have been nine flat at most shops. But how many times have we said in this tournament, oh, they shouldn't, you know, like NC State. I mean, they, they should have been out a long time ago, and they still are here. So I, I think, yep. you know, look, Welcome I will say I think – if I'm Corby, you know, I, I would obviously bet it if I'm him. But, like, at me at this point, what I think will happen has been completely wrong many times. So I'm just saying at this point, I like Alabama, so UConn will surely win by 15. So could, that's could, be fa- could be Fadu, like we've been talking about. Oh, yeah, no, sure. Could be Fadu. You know, hey, yeah. let's look at that East bracket in Boston. And I talked to a couple of media people that were in there, and they were they were amazed, as you can imagine, courtside watching what UConn did. So we look at the East bracket that UConn emerged out of. And, Jeff, you brought this point up. The streak is now 10 NCAA tournament games and counting that they've won by 13 or more. And that's obviously factored into the betting line here of it being UConn 12 or 12 and a half or right around that number. Again, no team ever. This is remarkable. Not the Florida repeat team of 06, 07. Not the Duke repeat team, obviously, of, of 91, 92 when they went back to back. Not the John Wooden teams. This is incredible. They won seven national championships in a decade, a 10-year span, end of the 60s, into the 70s. None of those teams ever won 10 straight NCAA tournament games by 13 or more. That's what UConn has done. It's a record. So it kind of factors in. And you really thought Illinois would give them a better game or closer game. It didn't happen coming out of the bottom of that bracket like we were talking about on the Saturday preview show. But just too much. And the other thing, just real quick, Corby, they didn't they didn't make three pointers. UConn was only like three of 13 from three point range. Still won the game practically going away by 30 points, Corby. Yeah, it was an embarrassing effort by Illinois. We saw a team that basically got out coached in the second it started happening. They they went into a show. Um, and they led to a mask, basically try to take over the game by playing center and point guard. It was just an ugly performance, <laughs> and that's why there was a 30-0 to run. But I will say, we talked about, uh, I think it was Friday or Saturday show. It was Friday. The um, Dog slash Wolves national champ plus 185. Now you have two of those teams in the final four. So say, you're looking really good if you got that. You were talking about plus 185 on Dog slash Wolf, and that is Huskies, and that is Wolfpack. So two two of the four teams. Uh, make it out of there. Again, thank you for finding us. We see the live audience growing. We understand there's not a game to handicap for today. We will be here tomorrow. NIT games to talk about tomorrow. Little women's uh, tournament talk might even come up here with that uh, Titanic rematch of the national title game. LSU and Iowa coming tonight uh, in the Elite Eight game of the women's tournament as the women get ready to head to the Final Four. By the way, the NC State women make it into the Final Four. First Final Four appearance for them since 1998. The men are in First Final Four appearance since Jim Valvano, 1983. If the UConn women win tonight, obviously, we have two sets of men's and women's teams that are in the Final Four at the same time, same year. That's never happened before. Stay tuned. Stay tuned if that comes up uh, tonight. Hey, guys, let's move on to Purdue and that win over Tennessee. Let's take a look at our Midwest bracket here on BetUS TV. What a ball game. Uh, yesterday, Zach Eady finishes with the 40 points. Dalton connect every bit as valiant as we thought he would be 37 in the losing effort. Purdue again, nip and tuck. Uh, Tennessee got the game tied late, but Purdue in the final four minutes made shots, made a big three, got a couple of uh, stops, made their free throws. All right. Thoughts, Jeff Nadu thoughts on Purdue a year after being bounced by a 16 seed. They are now in the final four. Some thoughts, Jeff on that win. Yeah, I remember when we started this tournament, we've been talking about it all year. You know, the chip on the shoulder that Purdue has, it really seems like they have it, right? I mean, it's constant. You, know, you talk about a team that, that has had the world against them. All we've heard is Matt Painter, you know, Zach Eady's just good because he's tall. And he is. I mean, he's way bigger than everybody else. That said, they, they've had huge games. And you know, yesterday, the, the thought was, look, Dalton connected a huge game, but where was everyone else? And, you know, this is... This is a continued issue with Tennessee. You know, he does a ton, but no one else really stepped up. You know, guy hit a, a, a two, you know, a ball once in a while, but really outside of that, they had no answer for Edie. No one seemingly does. Um, look again, it's hard to beat a team that shoots twenty-two free throws more than you do. I, I don't really know where to go with that, but hey, look, Edie played well. Um, you know, and, and again, when you look at how to guard him, what do you what do you do? What do you do at this point? The only thing. Five. 
Klingon's the only guy that could actually, I think, deal with it. I hope they do because this is brutal to watch. The, the college basketball be, world will be better when we rid ourselves of Zach Eady. What a disaster to watch. <laughs> well, the, um, the Purdue fans don't agree on that. Although, Corby Craig, we've talked about this all year, how the games are officiating. Clearly, in the regional final, Tennessee had not one, not two, but three different bigs trying to guard him. And at one point, the foul total, I put this on social media in the middle of the second half, the foul total was 11 to nothing that they had called on the Tennessee bigs versus calling nothing yet on Zach Eady with a lot of different contact. If they get that kind of whistle uh, come Phoenix Glendale this weekend, that's great for Purdue because it, it benefited them that he kept going to the line and Tennessee was in foul trouble galore in the second half of that game. Corby, what about that thought? Yeah, the difference between Tennessee and NC State, and I, I might be on a limb and crazy here, but I think NC State actually matches up pretty well here. First off, Let's let's look at Purdue. This is a team who I, I I'm not I'm not in love with the Zach Eady type of basketball, but I will say a lot of teams, even Alabama, will find something that works and then they'll go away from it. Like it, it just doesn't make any sense. And like I will say, Purdue is amazing at knowing exactly what they can do to score and giving Zach Eady the ball. Like they run schemes for Zach Eady to touch the ball instantly, which you see a lot of teams with great players who don't do. So uh, interesting there. But I will say, I, I think this NC State team actually matches up pretty decent with Purdue. You see a guy in Middlebrooks who's kind of stepped up to be the physical leader. Um, you see they have, uh, what, Diara, who's a 6'10", 220, basically. Everybody keeps saying DJ Burns isn't in the condition to guard Zach Eady, but I don't think he'll be in the position to guard Zach Eady. I'm not sure that that'll be your matchup for the most of the time. And everyone's going to say, well, Zach Eady's able to get fouls. He, he, you just saw three players versus Tennessee, but you saw a true freshman who doesn't even see the floor trying to guard Zach Eady because they don't have bigs like how NC State right. has bigs. I think NC State's actually one of the more competent teams from the big man standpoint. Obviously, Klingon's going to guard Eady very well. Um, but if you wanted a sleeper to try to guard this guy, which is just basically an impossible task, I do think NC State at least matches up well. They're going to have to find ways to score. That's going to be an issue. Um, but I, I do think they match up well. One thing that's interesting to me, is that Edie gets so much attention. I think Braden Smith's played really good basketball. And we can look mm -hmm. at a futures market. We were talking about this before the show, TJ. But we look at a futures market of uh, most valuable player in the... Let's see if I can find this number. In the final four. Right, right. Yeah. Most most uh, most outstanding player. Uh, of course, Edie and Clean, Clean are like 2-1. to one. But you can get Braden Smith at plus 2,900. 29-1 to one for a guy wow. who had 15 assists two games ago. Uh, had eight and seven last game. Like, obviously, Edie's going to get the attention, but I think Braden Smith has the ability, especially in the championship, where Edie's going to be kind of swarmed by Klingon and a scheme that's what, obviously going to be attached understood. to him. What, it, what is Sears and what is Burns? I mean, I, I mean, obviously, uh, they have to win two games in two large upsets to be able to do that if you're NC State in Alabama. Certainly, it would be two large upsets for NC State, but what is Sears and what is Burns right now on the futures both market? 20, both 24-1, to 1, which if you... Price in like the uh, fact that they're a massive underdog in this uh, final four. I think Braden Smith's a, a definitely a better price there. Interesting. Uh, Jeff Nadu on NC State here again. A lot of veteran players, a lot of grad transfers. Uh, what Kevin Keats has assembled here, they've come together. I thought it was interesting, Jeff, that DJ Burns said in the post game interview live on CBS. Uh, he kind of he kind of aired out the business a little bit and said, hey, we were late for meetings. We were arguing with each other on the practice court and out on the floor. We've come together. We're now on time. We're now doing it the right way. That's fascinating. They they have obviously found something. Nine straight wins in the month of March in the postseason. Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, I was thinking about that yesterday. This group lost seven of their final nine games in the regular season. Their only wins are against Clemson, weirdly enough, and Boston College. Uh, just a complete disaster. They were 9-11 and 11 in conference this season. They were 17-14 and 14 in the regular season. And here they are. It, it's just amazing. I, I, I think it's one of the more improbable runs you'll ever see. Yes. It surely is. Um, and, let, you me know, do my let me do my nadu. Consider this. They're <laughs> playing the first ACC tournament game against Louisville. God-awful Louisville with Kenny Payne. Oh, yeah. You know, dead man walking. They're losing the game at halftime, NC State in a virtually mm -hmm. empty arena in Washington, D.C. That's how close this was to never getting off the runway yeah. at all. And they but win five the, games in five days, and here they are. I mean, they were losing to Louisville at the half. 
but in you the need first game uh, of the ACC tournament. Yeah. But you need things to go your way, and, and they've had them go their way. And look, for all you people, you you complete imbeciles that keep talking about his conditioning. What? He's in the Final Four. He can't. So how? Why can't he guard anybody? Up? What are you talking about? Like, oh, uh, Diara. I see some guy in the chat. Diara can't guard Edie. Look, no one said he can. Right. But right. look, I think they've done enough. Right. And look, I'll tell you right they now, just, though, they have to they did pretty they did pretty well against Filipowski, Mitchell exactly. and company exactly. down low. They did. They did pretty well in the previous game um, uh, with Igadora and Marquette. He is crafty, um, DJ Burns. That's the thing that he has yes. that that a lot of other players don't. Um, and I'm not telling feet. you quick first step, um, quick feet. To be able to maneuver around, no, he doesn't have Edie's size, but the quick feet can help him with deflections and right. harassing Edie, and who knows? And who look knows? at this number. It opened 11 and a half, down to 9 and a half. The whole, sh- all the wow. sharp money's come in on NC State, and, and I think that's the, the thought. It is too high. If I were to bet, bet either of these games, again, uh, I haven't been good. I want to make that clear. We all know that, but I would lean NC State. I, I think I think they can hang in this game, and, and look, again, you're also going to play some tax. Uh, on uh, on on Zach Eady and Purdue as well, uh, but if you're talking about conditioning issues with him at this point, uh, you're a you're a, you're a complete moron. Yeah, I mean, obviously they didn't have any problem five games and five nights still having legs, but I mean, so much of this is fragile. Remember, they banked in a three pointer when Virginia stupidly did not grab them and foul them up by three. Out of a timeout, they banked in a three-pointer to put the game in overtime. They beat Virginia. They beat North Carolina. The next night, they have not looked back now. Hey, TJ, this is the sick thing about the Internet. Most of these people that are talking about conditioning issues literally (laughs) couldn't run a 30-second sprint. From here to the mailbox? Yeah. They they, they literally get sick walking up the stairs, and they're talking about conditioning issues. Exactly. Conditioning, sure. All right, get some live questions ready. We'll get ready for your Q&A here in a couple of moments. Again, we don't have specific games. I will say on the front end, Savages, we love you, but we're not going to talk at length about the NIT because there's a Tuesday show tomorrow. Corby, we got to pace ourselves. There's a Tuesday show tomorrow to talk about the NIT semifinals in Indianapolis. Intriguing that Indiana State is there uh, as part of that at, at famed Hinkle Fieldhouse, but that's tomorrow on the show, so not a lot on that. But if you've got questions kind of like the futures market like we've been talking about, the women's tournament may even come up, fire in some questions here uh, in the live chat. And one more point here about NC State. Once again, it's an 11 seed. Did you see this stat that since 2013, they did not play a tournament, obviously, in 2020. So this is now the 10th tournament since 2013, where a team seeded five or lower, that's NC State this time, at least one, has made the Final Four. So don't, I mean, again, don't sleep on the teams that have even a double digit by their name can't get in there. Florida Atlantic a year ago was a nine seed and and got in uh, to the Final Four. In this case, it's an 11 with NC State. In recent history, UCLA was an 11 seed. We take a look there at that South Bracket. 11 seed in 2021, they made it into the Final Four. Loyola Chicago, let us not forget, 2018, came out of uh, the South bracket as an 11 seed. Porter Moser's team, uh, having uh, having got advanced to San Antonio, and even Shaka Smart and Virginia Commonwealth back in uh, 2011, they advanced as an 11 seed. So an 11 seed has had some magic even in the last 15 years. This is the fourth one, the fourth 11 seed that has made the final four. Guys, just a quick thought. Anything else? I think else one, on that? Um, yeah, one really impressive thing about NC State that we, we have we haven't really talked about just because of Burns and kind of the, the lovable fact of him. I mean, defensively, man, they have been really good. I mean, they shut down an elite Marquette offense, an elite ball screen offense in Marquette. I mean, Duke looked really bad in the second half. Um, just, just really impressive. Kevin Keats, I, you know, I, look, him and Brad Brunel, I, I think we all kind of wondered about, but they definitely shut a lot of people up this week uh, no with, doubt. with their performance. I, I think NC State is a really, really interesting team. And I think what they also have that a lot of these teams don't have what, is what you just mentioned. They're not supposed to be here, right? They're a 12 seed or whatever they were. Um, or not a 12 seed, whatever they were. 11. Yeah, 11. Yeah. They're not supposed to be here. And I think they're using that look. If I'm Keats, I walk in that locker room on Saturday. I say, you know what they think we are? A, 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 a 10 point underdog to this team. You know, all we've done, and, and we're still being disrespected. I mean, Corby, you're, you're a numbers guy, too. I mean, 10 is hot. What did you, Corby, out of curiosity, what did your numbers make the number? NC State, Purdue, when it was all settled Sunday night? 
Basically seven and a half, seven and a half, eight. I already bet yeah. NC State, but it didn't move, so I didn't play. Um, I, I think the matchup's a lot better than people give them credit for. Also, Jeff hits nail on head. Like the coaching, I have upgraded twice in this tournament. Uh, if you saw their full court press break versus Duke, Duke has a really good full court press with three really mm-hmm. long active guards, and they broke it. I don't know if Duke had a turnover from the full court press. So giving they them a lot them, of coaching, they burned them for a well. layup or dunk. What like three times? They're obviously prepared. They pass the ball. Again, if Kevin Keats loses that game to Louisville, if, 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 he's likely fired the next day or that later that week. He now has an extension, Brother Nadeau, automatically for winning the ACC tournament. He picked up another hundred grand in a bonus for making the Final Four. Good to be Kevin Keats and his agent right now. Well, he, uh, um, that's for sure. I would yeah. love to ask DJ Burns, and I, I I don't watch the press conferences, so I don't know, but you continue to watch his game, and it is fascinatingly similar to that guy that I talked about, Escalade, from the N1 Mixtape Tour. His his moves are wild. Like, the, some yeah. of the spin moves, I mean, he's... Uh, well, he's got, again, he's got a quick first step. He is agile at that size, because Duke, again, Duke was trying... To, to front him, they were playing behind him, and he was getting around, even when they played behind him, he was getting around him and getting position. Uh, and again, he can defend to an extent. No, he's not as big as Edie, but he can def- he can defend some, and he's got fouls to give. So, all right, questions a, uh, and answers. Yeah, anything else? Questions and answers. I heard, a, get to that? I heard a DJ Burns uh, reference that I thought was really good. It was, it was on the uh, Duke game, I think. They said that he, he's a mixture of Shaq and Zach Randolph. I thought that was hilarious. I, w- w- way further away from Shaq, much closer to Zach Randolph. But I do think he plays with the personality that Randolph plays with. Again, I keep going to the 1994 reference, and Grant Hill played in this Final Four and played in the championship game. Uh, it, it is the Florida Gator player, Dimitri Hill, out of St. Petersburg, Florida, who was about 6'3", and I'm not kidding you, Jeff Nadu, he was about 280 pounds, big, wide body, not as tall as Burns, but Demet Hook, Dimitri Hill, he'd shoot hook shots. They called him Demet Hook. This is Demet Hook 2.0. I'll tell you now right in now, it's crazy. He he is going to be a fan favorite this week because people hate Zach Eady. A lot of people hate <laughs> Zach Eady. And, and look, by, I think people and by the way, want... the three letters NIL for DJ Burns this week. Somebody's got to do an NIL deal with him. Well, you he has like believe. five already. Five. Oh, yeah. Get him another one for the final four. And the price goes up. Price goes up. All right. A couple of quick questions. Let's see. Um, How about this? Money M. Grizz, if I have that right, says Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese tonight. Who are we taking in the rematch, Jeff Nadeau, of LSU and Iowa? LSU obviously won the national title at Iowa's expense a year ago. Elite eight game tonight. Neutral floor in Albany, New York, where they're playing it. What about it? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, we obviously know how big a game this is. I mean, and look, thank God. I mean, it, it, it's been rough at times watching some of these games in this NCAA tournament. Um, that said, um, I, I like LSU personally. I mean, and I've I've actually been good in this tournament. I haven't lost yet, which I'm very proud of. Good. Uh, Flu J Johnson is terrific. Uh-huh. You're going to hear a lot about Angel Reese, but Flu J Johnson, Haley Van Leith, and they're, they're really, really good. I saw kind of a crack that developed, and again, Iowa reminds me a lot of Tennessee a little bit. I, I think they have a really elite player, a terrific player, mm-hmm. but I feel like West Virginia gave a little bit of a blueprint on how to kind of deal with them. Um, and, and just look, Caitlin Clark's going to get hers. You try to front her and do what you can, and Try to make someone else beat you. I think LSU is a little bit more just – they have more – they have significantly more um, just ability to score in different ways. Yeah. They don't need one player to go off. And they're physical and tough up front. So, yeah, hey, I like LSU. And, Corby, I know you don't watch much of this, so Jeff and I are kind of monopolizing the answer. Uh, that's why for the peeps that are watching here. But LSU does a couple of things we talk about all the time. They don't turn the ball over, Kim Mulkey's team, and they made every free throw, literally, eight in a row at the end of the game – Uh, The other day with UCLA, a great finish. They made every free throw in the final two minutes of that game. So foul shooting could be a big factor tonight. This is no exaggeration. There are going to be seven, eight, nine million people watch this game. That's about seven times the normal audience of a women's Elite Eight or Sweet 16 game that ESPN televises. It's going to be that big of a deal tonight for whatever it's worth. uh, Iowa favored by two. On the neutral floor, the other semifinal game is UConn and Southern Cal out in Portland, where USC 
He is a three and a half point underdog. Very interesting. Very big, skilled freshman guard forward Juju Watkins for USC, one of the premier players in in uh, women's basketball. They're a three point underdog to UConn tonight, all the way out in Portland. For what it's worth on that it's all other gonna, game, it's all going to come down. I think again, controlling the boards, which LSU does. They're one of the best rebounding teams of the country. <laughs> They're also a top seventy five three point defense. So, to me. It's a coin flip, obviously legacy game you're going to hear a lot about, but yep. I'll tell you what, I mean, LSU put it on Iowa last year, put it on them. Sure. I, I, I think the, the swag's there, and they're also going to say LSU, they're kind of playing for their coach a little bit, who a lot of, of just pathetic things have come out about. Uh, I like LSU here. Interesting. Uh, all right, and a lot of good conversation there in the chat. Uh, Bobby watching says, is there a way to hedge – an NC State championship future. Uh, Corby Craig, a thought on that, because if you're holding on to one, now might be the time to think about it, right? Yeah, you can definitely hedge it. Um, you didn't take it to hedge, so if it's just like, if it's not life-changing money, I wouldn't hedge. You're going to lose right. a lot of VIG. But um, if you wanted to, obvi- uh, first off, depends what price you got. That's the most important part. But um, can help wa- walk you through the math if you need. You reach out to me on DMs. It's uh, it's not the easiest <laughs> process, but if you got a if you got a pretty good NC State price, yes, you can hedge out of that. I think you know, obviously, uh, before they won the Marquette game, for example, they had to still be like forty or fifty to one to win the tournament, right? Before the Marquette win, maybe not. Certainly, yeah, saw- certainly when the tournament began, they had to be forty or fifty to one NC State at least. And so we're talking about a serious. Some- Payout. I saw some two tens, two ten to one, um, and that's the that's where math gets hard. Like two ten to one, basically you'd bet Purdue money line, which is what minus six hundred. Two ten to one, you'd probably bet like a quarter unquote fifty units on it, because then at the championship you'd have all the rest of that UConn. So uh, it would get really ugly really fast, and it would have to be like an actual amount of money that matters to to go through all of that. I'm looking to see if there's any other good questions at the moment. Again, I know we don't have games today. Before we get out of here, uh, Jeff, did you weigh in on most outstanding player thought if it's not Klingon, maybe it's Cam Spencer, maybe it's Newton off the UConn team that's a better value to look at? Any thought on that? I I think, you know, Corby, I think, always presents an interesting, you know, if it's not this, what what would it be? I I just think – I like Braden Smith. I like Fletcher Lawyer. Lance Jones, a great player, but Zach Eady's getting it if they win. I mean, it's just right, that simple. Right. You know, he's he's larger than life. I, I think you just have to kind of identify. Look, if it's NC State, it's DJ Burns. If it's uh, UConn, I think UConn is, is probably the more interesting case because look, Klingon is it's terrific, but they, they have had other players play really well right. also in this tournament. So, like, I look at a guy, you know, obviously Klingon, but Cam Spencer's really good. Newton. I don't know. Yeah, Newton, sure. Uh, Stephen Castle. They, they have they have so many kids that are good. Why not give it to Hurley? I mean, very interesting uh, debates. All right, so good show here for a Monday. Again, we don't have best bets. We don't have games. We are going to be here at 11 a.m. all week long, 11 a.m. Eastern time, and get ready for the Final Four. I will be heading out to Arizona Thursday. I'll be live, God willing, with you guys from the desert on Friday's show, previewing the national semifinals in earnest. Tomorrow on the show, we'll have the NIT matchups, Indiana State, Utah, and uh, the other one with Seton Hall and Georgia coming up in Indianapolis. We'll handicap those games, maybe have some official plays. Were you going to play anything before we left with a live play on the women's I'm not tournament? sure if I'm allowed. I, I'll just say I like LSU. Do what you want you like with it. LSU, LSU plus take two. the points. It right. could be the end of Caitlin Clark before they get to the Final Four in Cleveland if LSU gets them again. Or does Iowa knock off their nemesis from last year, the defending national champs? We'll find out. It's going to have I'll massive tell you attention. One real quick, game. underrated thing about this game. She needs to watch herself. Her behavior, she, she, you can tell Angel Reese gets to her occasionally and and look that's what Angel Reese does that's what LSU does they're going to try to get in her head a little bit of course maybe get her technical you know, get her off the court that's what they're going to try to do but if you watch that's what I've I would watched do. a ton I've watched a ton of Caitlin Clark even playing regular season games she's running her mouth arguing with the refs gesturing in every game that's who she is that's and what TJ. she does she even but wait a minute she even had the moment where she's looking up at her dad and gesturing in the stands and what did her dad say great advice from a dad to the daughters shut up 
Just play the game. Stop you, complaining about all the stuff. But go what ahead. you have to do is you have to find the weakest person. You have to manipulate them. That's what I would do. Um, you have to find that guy that's just weak. He doesn't have it in him, and you have to just pick at him. And eventually, he'll he'll do something stupid. That's how it goes. Well, let's see. Let's see if Caitlin Clark gets she her redemption will. tonight. Good stuff. Uh, Jeff, thank you. Corby, thank you. Any any final thoughts? Corby, you're good. Jeff, you're good. Here for a Monday? I think we're good on a Monday. Good luck, everyone. All right. Corby, thank you. We're back tomorrow at 11 a.m. More on the NIT and much more. Be with us all week heading to the men's Final Four as well in Arizona here on BetUS TV. Thanks for joining in. Don't forget to like our video. If you don't want to miss our next show, make sure to ring our bell and subscribe. For all our sports content, head to BetUSTV.com. See you next time.